My name is Heather White with Save the River from Clayton, New York, talking today about the season fall. Fall is a beautiful, busy time of year for the animals that we share the St. Lawrence River with. Some animals are preparing to migrate. Some animals are getting ready to hibernate during the cold, cold winter. And still other animals are getting ready to stay in the area during the winter months and remain active. We have many very clear, beautiful days during the fall when you walk along the shoreline of the river the water is so clear you can see down below the surface and all that's going on. Let's learn more about the river during fall. Fall is a great time to enjoy the river and the abundance of nature. There's so much happening above us in the sky, along the shoreline, and underwater. Mammals, like the white-tailed deer, will molt or grow a new, longer coat of hollow fur with a woolly undercoat. As the snows begin to fall, they move to their winter feeding range. Crepuscular river mammals, animals that are active at dusk and dawn, such as mink, muskrats, and raccoons, are active along the shoreline year-round. Raccoon cubs that are born in the spring leave their dens and search out their own territory. Muskrats will burrow into the riverbanks or make a den in marshy areas. River otters can be spotted swimming near shorelines of protected bays. The pups are still following their mother around, enjoying time with less boat noise. Birds are very busy during the season of fall. For those that migrate, it can be a long and sometimes dangerous journey. Nightlight pollution can distract birds and even sometimes cause collisions with buildings. You can help by just turning your outdoor lights off before you go to bed at night. Birds also need places to rest and hydrate during their long migration. Birds from the St. Lawrence River area that migrate include the osprey, the heron, the Canada goose, and the loon. The common tern, which is an endangered species that Save the River works to protect during the summer, leaves for its wintering grounds in South America by mid-October. Did you know that a tern can fly 40 miles an hour? That's pretty fast. The osprey, which is a New York State special concern bird will leave the area to migrate south usually around the first week of September when you're all heading back to school. Bald eagles which are threatened. Some move south actually into the St. Lawrence River region so we'll have additional bald eagles and during the winter months you can often see them if you walk along the river out on the ice fishing. Last bird I'm thinking about today is the mute swan. Now that is an invasive species that is being monitored for the numbers that are growing in this area. The mute swan actually remains in bays along the river all winter long. Reptiles and amphibians can be seen along the river in the warmer weather. The lack of sun and cooler temperatures causes a shift in their behaviors. Turtles can be seen basking in the sun on a log above the water's surface. When the days become cool, turtles move underwater. The snapping turtle moves to the muddy bottom to overwinter. Water snakes are able to herd small fish along the water's edge as long as the weather holds. If needed, they can warm up by sunning themselves on a tree branch. Frogs can be spotted by their floating eyes right at the surface of the water. By late fall, they burrow down into the mud where they absorb the stored oxygen. Salamanders are very active this time of year since they prefer cooler conditions. 
In the evening, they come out from underneath their rocks and leaves in order to hunt insects and small invertebrates. I'm Jeff Garzi. I'm uh, the board president for Your Save the River. Um, this morning, I'd like to just talk briefly about some of the changing behaviors with the changing seasons of a couple of our um, predominantly sport fish uh, species on the river. Um, first of all, we have cold and warm water spawners, and they normally set up this time of the year for their transition into their late fall, early winter, and then through the winter um, feeding grounds. They like to bulk up and store a lot of fatty tissue throughout the late summer, early fall, so that they can make that transition through the, uh, the winter. The biggest change that we see with the big apex predator, um, the large muskies, when the temperature hits about 50 degrees, they start coming off the lake. And how you can tell you've got a big lake fish returning to its winter grounds is generally you pick them up onto your boat and they exhaust a bunch of gas that smells just like old Elwise. And there's nothing on the river that smells nearly as nasty as some lake Elwise burps. Um, next, they transition out of the deep water into a little bit shallow that's exactly the opposite with the bass. They start very, very early in the spring when the water is cold in shallow water, and it's adjacent to their spawning grounds. And remember, they're a warm water spawner as opposed to the northern pike and muskies that are cold water spawners. So when the water temperature starts to decline and get down into those upper 50s, down to 50 and then lower, the bass actually return from those real deep 60, 70 feet that they hang out with uh, in like late August, back up into the shallower, and by the time the water starts to get a little bit of crust on it and it really gets chilly, they've returned up into that 8, 10, 12 feet, and they'll be waiting for the ice to withdraw, the temperatures to start climbing up, and that's when it triggers their spawn in the spring in the shallow waters. Uh, and that's really the two, the two biggest changes that we see this time of the year. And uh, good luck to all of you who are out there uh, trying to find one. I hope you enjoyed a little bit about the St. Lawrence River and this busy season called fall. Fall is such a beautiful time to learn about the abundance of nature that share the river habitat. Remember that small acts of kindness can help these animals during this busy season and into the winter months. Maybe put a bird feeder up or a water source in your backyard for the birds. Turn off your outdoor lights when you go to bed at night. Consider leaving a small area of your yard unraked. Many of the smaller creatures will hibernate under those leaves that can be raked away in the spring. And as always, if you're taking a hike along the river and you find some garbage, I always put a little bag in my pocket so I can collect a little bit of garbage and dispose of it properly. It's really easy to be a friend to the river and all the creatures that call it home. And you can learn more by visiting www.savetheriver.org and then click on the bar marked Education where you will see more videos and more story times that you and the rest of your family or class might enjoy. Hope you have fun along the river.